Hello, St. Michael's parishioners and friends. Uh, Father Braun here with a fireside chat. During this season of Easter, let us again begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of glory, by the rising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to light stands open in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So first of all, just a gentle reminder that next week, Sunday, May 2nd, Bishop Folda has reinstated the general obligation to attend Mass on Sundays. It's a general obligation and there are exemptions. Please remember that if a person has reason to believe that they were recently exposed to COVID or any other contagion, then you're not obligated to attend Mass. Or through no fault of your own that you're not able to attend, that's no sin. Likewise, if you're in a nursing home, obviously, or in a hospital or care facility, or if you're a care worker, you know, a health care worker in those facilities, one is not obligated to attend. And finally, too, those who have any significant fear or anxiety of becoming ill while attending Mass, they're not obligated to attend. That was uh, a mistaken um, notion that someone had in the Grand Forks Herald editorial a week ago or so, simply did not understand the teachings of our faith and what it means when we say a holy day of obligation. Speaking of a holy day of obligation, Sometimes that gets caught in people's, you know, kind of under, in their minds when they're not understanding what that means. So just simply to talk about that a little bit. Remember, um, a day of obligation is about having a movement of our hearts and the understanding of our soul. If our hearts are not moved to seek Christ, and if our soul does not yet understand who God is and what Christ has done for us, then we're not going to be moved to make an effort to worship him. And so, as you know, I make a simple illustration oftentimes, helping us to remember the importance. For example, an anniversary or a birthday of a parent. That simple comparison, if our hearts are not open to loving that spouse or the parent with the card, if we do not understand all that that person means to us, then we're not going to be bothered to remember their anniversary or their birthday and how sad that would be. Likewise, how sad for our world when people barely can make time for their creator, their Lord, who gave his life for us on the cross, to even give him one hour a week to worship him and to thank him. So let us please take that under, under our mind and our hearts as something to pray about. This past week, I did announce to the parish that I have been assigned a new parish at St. Anthony's now in Fargo. Father Raymond Courtright, who is now the current pastor of St. Anthony's and has served there for 12 years, will be moving to become your new pastor. So we're changing parishes. You may remember Father Courtright, he was here from 1997 to 2009 as the chaplain for the St. Thomas Aquinas Newman Center, a well-loved priest and pastor. So we're pleased to have him come to our parish. Please keep him in your prayers and myself as well during this time of transition entering into new communities to help serve and continue to preach and teach the gospel. Um, I do want to say thank you for all the support these past 17 years. It has been a blessing for me to be your pastor, to serve, and to feel that affirmation and support through the years in the things that we've done. Certainly to worship God every Sunday together, first and foremost, to, to be a praying community. And some of the physical things that people have done um, to help us in our community, uh, Air conditioning is just a minor thing in my mind, but it does help. But helping us with our pastoral center. Um, thank you for giving the priests a home that they can share with other priests now and their own families, the dignity of having space. That makes a big difference that we're not living in the midst of our offices and work constantly. So thank you for that. Plus the pastoral center has become a wonderful space for us for our meetings and other ministry opportunities in the future, small group meetings that we can host uh, we'll speak more about that when we talk about our survey that we recently took. So, um, nonetheless, um, thank you for all the support in those things that we've done. I want to certainly encourage uh, our parents who are looking at education for your children to consider the gift of a Catholic education at St. Michael School. We have a wonderful school, a wonderful facility. We're going to be putting in new windows this summer uh, in that facility, in the old school that is. And as, as likewise, we're also going to be refurbishing the windows in our parish this summer, putting in um, not new stained glass, but some clear glass on the outside of our stained glass windows. All of that with the help of an estate gift from Harry Bouchard and also a grant from the Ingolstadt Foundation for our school. 
We thank those people and their remembrance of us in their wills and their gifts. I want to encourage all of us to consider when we come to the end of our life and call to heaven our home, that we too would leave some of our earthly belongings to our church and our communities of faith, just like the, our ancestors who built this beautiful facility of St. Michael's for us to worship in, they remembered us. Let us remember future generations with our gifts as well. So thank you. Uh, just a couple other quick notes. Um, first of all, this Monday, we have a, a holy hour planned for our families with young children, an opportunity for parents to bring their little toddlers along and not to worry about them getting a little restless during that hour, but still to teach them the wonder and the mystery of God's presence somehow hidden in that, in that host, and yet his presence truly there. And also, uh, our youth group is selling, uh, having a bake sale this Sunday, April 25th, they're raising money for their trip to Steubenville Conference. It's in Rochester, Minnesota, but nonetheless, it's a beautiful conference with great speakers about our faith, worshiping together, mass, um, wonderful talks. So please support them in their efforts to raise money for that Steubenville Conference. Um, so that's it for today. Um, please keep me in your prayers. And again, thank you for all your love and support. I'll be here through June 23rd, of course, uh, celebrating graduations and weddings yet, and we'll continue to do that down the road. So God bless you all. And let us close with a prayer to our Blessed Mother Mary for her prayers for us as she always stands before Christ, her Son, our Lord and Savior, to intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless everyone.